Hello everyone and welcome back to the Jamzy Online YouTube channel. Today we have a Cummins flywheel in to be resurfaced. I honestly don't know the exact application that this part is used in, but it doesn't really matter to us as long as we know the specification for the distance between the two surfaces of the flywheel. Normally we would just wash the flywheel in our spray cabinet, but clearly this one has been sitting for a while and it has a good amount of rust built up, so I opted to glass bead the rust off real quick to clean it up a bit better before running it through the spray cabinet. The wash in the spray cabinet will help cut any additional grease and dirt that may be left on the part, as well as rinse any additional dust and glass beads left from the blast process. All of the bolt holes are also thoroughly rinsed and the flywheel is blown dry after rinsing. At this point it looks a lot better, but before we get started on the actual grinding process, there was one broken bolt in the flywheel that needed to be removed. To start with, I grabbed a washer and a nut and welded directly to the broken bolt. Usually this method is pretty foolproof, but the first try broke off immediately. I thought I would drill a small hole in the center before my second attempt, and upon attempting to drill, the bolt actually moved about an eighth of a turn. Knowing that the bolt was free, I figured welding would still be my best option as long as I got a better weld, so I started by welding just the washer to the bolt, followed by welding the nut on top. Immediately I could tell that this attempt was going to be successful, as the bolt actually was perfectly free and was able to unscrew right on out without needing any penetrating oil. This is usually an indication that the bolt broke due to some sort of fatigue, as opposed to breaking off due to being seized, as a seized bolt usually requires quite a bit more effort to remove in my experience. With the flywheel completely cleaned and the broken bolt removed, we can get it fixtured to the table of our flywheel grinding machine. A small adapting spacer is used between the table of the grinder and the mounting flange of the flywheel to ensure that the faces are ground true to the flange that will adapt to the crankshaft of the engine. A tapered centering cone is used with a bolt down through the center of the flywheel to fixture the flywheel tight to the table. Even with the centering cone, it still requires a bit of effort to get it to run true, but it's as simple as running the table with the flywheel installed and adjusting it as needed until it's reasonably centered and then tightening it down. I should note that it needs to be close to centered, but not perfect, so there's no need to grab a dial indicator. At this point, I wanted to point out that you can see the outer edge of the wear from the clutch as shown here. It's critical to make sure that we grind the face past this point, but it's not necessary to get clear out to the very corner of the flywheel. Also, we can see that this flywheel has been reground at least once before, as you can see the radius from the factory grinding stone in the very corner of the flywheel, and then we also see a much tighter radius a bit further in from the flywheel having been resurfaced at least once before it arrived at our shop. Our CBN grinding abrasive is tapered and will actually reach well outside the clutch wear surface without removing the pins around the circumference of the flywheel, as long as we have the flywheel centered well and can get the stone right up close to them with a small amount of clearance. At this point, we're ready to begin the actual grinding process, starting first on the wear surface. Our machine runs a water-based grinding coolant, which helps aid in the grinding process, keeping the workpiece and grinding wheel cool, as well as helping to wash away the swarf. Off the top of my head, I don't know what speed the table or the grinding wheel rotate at, but I know that the grinding wheel rotates quite quickly. With the wheel close to the face of the flywheel, we start the coolant, the table, and the wheel before beginning to slowly feed the wheel down into the flywheel. When the wheel first touches, we see that it is only removing material on the inside of the face where there is no wear. We slowly feed the wheel a few thousandths of an inch at a time, being sure not to feed the wheel too quickly and risk having any kind of accident. At this point, it's a bit harder to see as the coolant is dirty with swarf, but the face of the flywheel starts to shine up as it's ground flat. After a bit of grinding, the machine began to run short on coolant, so I began using water to help keep the grinding wheel cool while my dad went to grab some more coolant from across the shop. At this point, we also realized that the drain was not working, so the coolant was just collecting in the basin of the machine, so we had to stop the grinding process to clear the drain and make sure that we had adequate coolant. With the drain situation sorted out and the machine topped off with coolant, the grinding process was started again. From this view, you can see that as the machine runs, I'm slowly reaching to the wheel on top of the machine, which feeds the grinding wheel into the workpiece. Even in slow motion, you can see that the grinding wheel is spinning at a pretty high RPM and the sparks are flying even with the coolant running strong. Typically when grinding a flywheel, we like to feed the wheel a bit intermittently and find something else close by to keep ourselves productive as opposed to just standing in front of the machine waiting around. Depending on how long they were run and how significant the wear is, they can take a decent few minutes to grind flat again. Once we can see that the flywheel has cleaned up completely and is flat, we will let the grinding wheel spark out before going ahead and turning off the machine to switch over to grinding the second surface. The machine does have a power feed to raise and lower the column, but unfortunately ours needs a bit of work, so we have to help it along with the manual feed wheel in order to raise the grinding wheel. At this point, we're going to reposition the grinding wheel over the upper step of the flywheel and begin the grinding process on this surface. 
This surface is not going to have the wear on it as the lower surface of the flywheel did from the clutch, but an equal amount of material must be removed in order to get the two steps the correct specified distance from each other. As such, I like to begin by taking a bit of material off of the upper surface to ensure that it is indeed flat and true before measuring our step to get an exact measurement of how much more material needs to be removed. You can also see how this machine can be pretty messy, and as such, we keep it in the teardown area of the machine shop. If a guy had more free time, he could probably make some better splash shields to use on the taller flywheels such as this, but we just don't seem to have very much free time. The guys who have been around a while will know that specification between the steps is going to be 2.937 inches right off the top of their head, but I went ahead and printed the specification sheet to show in the video, and we can see that the spec is allowed to be from 2.932 inches to 2.942 inches, giving us a tolerance range of 10 thousandths of an inch. An easy way to make this measurement is to take a precision ground straight edge and lay it across the top of the flywheel. With our caliper zeroed to the width of the straight edge, we can then make our depth measurement from the top of the straight edge to the bottom surface of the flywheel. This type of measurement is one of those things that looks complicated, but with a bit of practice can produce very accurate and repeatable measurements. By taking note of our measurement and doing a bit of quick math to the middle of our specified tolerance, we will know the exact amount of material that needs to be removed from the top step. While the machine does have a scale that is supposed to show increments of one thousandth of an inch, I still prefer to sneak up on it so that we don't overshoot the dimension. Even if we did overshoot the dimension, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it would add a bit of work as we would be forced to move the grinding wheel back to the lower face again and take additional material there. While this entire process may look and sound a bit complicated, it's actually one of the more simple machining processes that we provide here in our shop. Single surface flywheels are obviously much easier, but even a dual surface flywheel as shown here can be fairly profitable, especially when the machine was paid for literal decades ago. Once we have the flywheel dimension set to the specified tolerance, there's really only a couple of additional steps in the process. To begin with, we'll use a spray nozzle to rinse the flywheel and the machine clean of any remaining swarf. Usually we simply use a cutoff wheel in the die grinder to quickly take off the sharp edges that are left after grinding, but for whatever reason the cutoff wheel was leaving me a pretty jagged chamfer, so I switched over to a small grinding stone to leave a better finish with no sharp edges. Now I'll be honest, I've never been in the installing mechanics shoes for the install of one of these big flywheels, but as far as I'm aware the chamfer does nothing for the performance of the flywheel. However, taking the sharp edges off goes a long ways in keeping your hands safe and cut free as you're moving this chunk of iron around. As you can see, the CBN grinding wheel does a wonderful job and leaves a flat surface with a great surface finish. From here, we'll typically run the flywheel through our spray cabinet one more time to ensure that it's perfectly clean for our customer. Of course, we also make one more check of our dimension to ensure that our customers won't have any issues with the install. As much as we appreciate our customers, we don't tend to enjoy seeing their faces more than once on the same job. If you've hung around this long, we want to say a huge thank you to you from our family-owned business. Be sure to follow us on our other socials and check out our website, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.